going to click it yet. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually going to hover over it and click this small little um, icon where it says learn more. It's kind of like an I. So I'm going to click learn more to learn more about this specific model. And that's kind of neat to be able to do because then you can like, if you're just browsing through all the models, maybe just from the thumbnail, you don't really understand what it does or from the title, but here you can read more about what a particular model does. You can maybe see an image kind of indicating what it does. So this model seems to be detecting objects and also figuring out their bounding boxes. And then you can also read about the license. Uh, what can you use this for? What can't you use this for? Then sometimes if you scroll even further down, you can kind of see a bit about like these models are typically not made by Runway. They're made by somebody else. This model particularly is made by Google, it seems. Um, so you can actually have a look at the GitHub repo. That's where they store the code for this model. Or you can maybe have a look at the research paper, like what's the science that went behind this uh, particular model. So you don't have to open it. Okay, and now this, this link is, is off, but most of the time the links are actually good. Uh, so maybe for the GitHub, let's have a look. Then you can kind of see a bit about- Do they, do they all have research papers and GitHub associated with them? Um, the majority, I would say, but not all of them. Um, it's not a prerequisite, or it's not a man mandatory. No, it's not, uh, it's not mandatory. Um, yeah, there's somebody uh, in the background where there's quite a lot of talk that doesn't seem to relate to this workshop. So if you're not actively talking, I encourage you to uh, mute the microphone. Yeah, okay. sorry, that was me, but I oh. asked a question, but I turned uh, it off. My son, my son is playing video games in the background. <laughs> ah, okay, no problem at all. Uh, no problem at all. Okay. Then what we want to do now, we want to add this model to a workspace. So before you can run a model, you need to uh, create a workspace. So you want to click add work, add to workspace. And if, if this is the first time you have uh, done anything inside Runway, you probably don't have any workspaces. So then you're just going to click new workspace. And then you can rename your workspace. It doesn't really matter what the name is. So I'm just going to call this uh, MIT workshop. And then I'm going to click create. And now our view has changed. So before we were actually in, in this view, the browse models view, but now we're in workspace view. view. So if you click browse models, that takes you back to the overview of all the potential models you can play with. But we have now added a model to workspaces. And you should see something along the lines of this. So can I maybe get, um, get people to thumbs up if they have added Coco to their workspace? Any, any issues or any questions? Then you can post them now or you can do it in the chat. Just a quick question. If I already have a workspace uh, with previous experiments, can I create a new workspace? Is there an option or it's all in, in one workspace? Uh, you should be able to create new workspaces. You can kind of, oh yeah. They, so they, they, the thing about Runway is that they, they change the, the software all the time. You can actually see that since I opened it, which is less than an hour ago, they updated it once again. So if I relaunch it, there's a new, Updates sometimes the UI gets moved a bit. I think, okay, let's have, let me, to, to answer your question, let's just try it out. So let's say I have a model here and I kind of want to like this one. I kind of want to, yeah, I want to add this. So I could either add it to an existing workspace or I can create a new workspace. It doesn't really matter right now. Like, when we're trying it out in this work in this workshop, I would just encourage you to have it all in one workspace. Uh, other questions? It doesn't seem so. Okay, so 
what you want to do then is to you can select different inputs so this model is basically a image detection model that's able to detect multiple objects in the same image and um, so it needs a, a, an input that will feed it some images and you can do that in different ways either through a file that could be an image file a directory of images or maybe a movie file or you can do it through your webcam um, i'm going to do it through my webcam so i'm going to click camera depending on your uh, uh, operating system and your maybe your security settings maybe you need to allow runway to access the webcam and if that's a really big hurdle, then you can just do it with local files you have on your computer. And I think I encourage you all in the email to uh, prepare a folder of files. If you haven't prepared a folder of files, um, then you can also, uh, in, the, in the workshop, you can download here, it's a zip with uh, sample images to use. Um, but for most of you, I would encourage you to just use your webcam on windows sometimes having multiple applications use your webcam at the same time can doesn't work so so if that blocks you maybe you can turn off your webcam here in zoom and then try to open it in runway if you're on windows on mac it's it normally handles it fine okay so i'm gonna uh, turn on the webcam and then what i want to do is run this model and i want to run this model locally it should be the only option you have because this is a pretty lightweight model that actually comes with runway. Later, we'll talk about running models remotely. So for now, let's just run it locally. Do you want to click that button? And now it's starting. And then hopefully you should see something along the lines of what I'm seeing. So it should make a bounding box around you as a person. And if you hold up objects that it can recognize, then hopefully it should kind of also do uh, bounding boxes around those. So, and this model is only able to detect a 90 kind of average um, or very ordinary objects. So it knows about banana. It kind of knows about this apple and it knows about me. But if you hold up your headphones, maybe it doesn't necessarily work. Uh, Coco only has uh, 90 categories and it's not the most reliable thing in the world. However, it's pretty fast and it can run just uh, on your computer just fine. And it can even like kind of pick up some books in the background for me, which is interesting. Um, so let me just get a feel for, are people able to do this? So put a thumbs up or maybe like you can also make a, re a reaction in um, in Zoom, where you make like an emoji, a thumbs up, thumbs down. So, uh, Halse has issues. Do you want to say what your issues are? I, I, I just, my computer, I think, is having a little uh, challenge here. I seem to be frozen up. So, I'm hoping that it will just work. Uh, okay. In it's a second. A okay. It, it can, yeah. So, this is running locally on your computer, actually. If, and if your computer is doing a lot of other stuff in the, in the background, or if it's not like a really fast computer, maybe it'll be a bit slow. Um, if it doesn't work, you can try to quit runway and, and try again. Okay. Okay. So when we're running a model like this, you can see the preview locally, which might be interesting for you to just check out. You can also have a look at the actual data, like what is it actually spitting out? And for that, you click this small button down here called show data. And then you can see what it's doing. So it's detecting these objects and each object has a label and a bounding box. So for me, it's kind of like person and then sometimes there's some books and the bounding box describes where in the image is this, is this app. The label describes what is uh, the category. You can, so that's kind of one way of doing it. You can also choose to export. Um, so you can export everything that's being seen to a CSV file. If you kind of want to keep track of all the objects that are being uh, detected, maybe if this is like 
we're using traffic footage and you want to do it for days, it's kind of interesting to analyze uh, where the cars were at or where the pedestrians were at. Um, so that's kind of the text uh, export type. Other models will have other export types, but this one has text as its uh, export type and in a CSV format or yeah, JSON format as well. Um, then a the thing I want to try out real fast, uh, and I encourage you to do as well, is to try to input not just the camera feed, but actually files from your computer. So I hope some of you prepared some files already. Otherwise, I have on the website a zip of uh, random images you can use, or maybe you just have some images lying around uh, on your desktop that you can try to feed it with. Um, so that what you want to do is click File, and then you can open either a single file or a directory of files. I have a directory of files that I kind of want to try out. And that one is, is the zip that I also linked to on the webpage called sample images. So I want to open that one. And then you should see all the files from that directory that you selected pop up up here. And then if the model is running, then you should be able to click the individual images and they will spit out their detection. And sometimes like these images that I chose are kind of weird, so they don't always have a, a detection or maybe it's kind of wrong. Like here with the stock, it sees two birds where there's actually only one. Here with the dolphins, it doesn't detect anything. And it thinks that this Burger is like, I think it's, it thinks it's a sandwich. So like you can kind of get an idea about that. This is not the most accurate model in the world, but it, but it's like decent at, at certain things. Um, let me know if this is working for people. The idea of running a, a sample of images through a model. Is it working or are you having, having issues? Okay. Good. Am I, in general, am I moving too slow or too fast or is it okay? It's okay. Okay. Um, then the reason why I want to show you uh, kind of like this uh, way of, of adding um, files and also adding a whole directory of files is that that's, it's kind of nice to use in combination with the export setting. So if you want to like run, like now I'm only going to do it with these 27 files, but um, you can actually take a whole directory of files, analyze them and export everything in, for instance, JSON format. So I'm going to click export and I'm going to select export type text. That's the only one I can select. I think I want it in JSON format. And then I want to, you can specify what should it be called and where should it be placed your uh, exported uh, JSON file. I think I want to just put mine on the desktop. Then I go save and then I click the export button. And this will then actually run through each uh, single image, analyze the content and save that in a JSON format on in a JSON file on my desktop. And that's kind of nice because then I have this sweet uh, file that I could maybe use later in a project. With all the detections, like a kite, a sandwich, and all the bounding boxes as well. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of just running a model. This is the most boring model we are uh, we will be running from now on. It will be more and more interesting and maybe also more and more weird, at least in my opinion. Uh, but hopefully you understand the basic flow. And I al already now see that there's a question in the chat. So, and where did the chat go? Oh, sometimes I can't really see the chat when I'm in Zoom. 
no worries. I was I just wanted to know you were you were saying that you could use the file in a project, and I just wanted to ask if like what type of project would use that type of file, and can you give an example of how you would use something like these images that we exported, like one example of how you'd use it in a project thank you um okay so so uh, i can i can give an example but it's going to be a, a pretty weird example but i hope you're okay with that uh, i'm going to give an example from my own artistic practice so um i will so i'm still sharing the screen um i have made a project uh, that is on my website, and I'll also share the share the link to it. Um, a recent project of mine called Fairy Tales, and it's a very very weird kind of experimental machine learning project uh, where the goal is to try to generate poetry based on boring images. So what I do in this project is that I take images, and I actually took one thousand images. 1,000 images, and I detected all the objects in those images. So, for instance, here it sees a toilet, here it found a suitcase, here there's a person, a keyboard, and a TV monitor. Then, what I'm doing is that I am creating a story where the title becomes the story of the X, meaning the, uh, the objects that are being detected. And then, in other cases, I'm kind of doing like the story of the horse and the dog because a horse and the dog is detected etc what i'm doing after that is that i'm kind of giving it a stereotypical beginning of a fairy tale so it could be something like in a place long forgotten or once upon a time or in a land far far away something like that and then what i do with all of that text like the title that is sort of halfway generated based on the objects and the uh, opening uh, sentence, which is my predefined stereotypical um, beginning of a fairy tale, plus uh, me kind of listing all the objects. I sent that to an algorithm called GPT-2. And maybe some of you have heard of GPT-2, and it's actually a model we will check out later in Runway. But GPT-2 is a model that you can feed with text, and it will continue your text. So it'll actually try to, you just give it a prompt, and it and it uh, tries to finish your text. And what happens then, in my case, is that, for instance, with the toilet, it creates somewhat of a coherent uh, fairy tale. Of course, it's very, very weird, but it's grammatically as good as my own English. Um, and I, I kind of personally find it to be interesting. So I'm just gonna read this one out loud. The story of the toilet, in a land far, far away, once lived the toilet. One day, a servant came to help clean it. Before he could start, the whole thing sprang up into a dragon. He returned home at once. A year later, he was summoned back to the same place where he found it was still a toilet, but more powerful. He found it that too much waste in the toilet caused an explosion, killing the whole thing. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like one very weird example of using it. Maybe a more like red, easy, obvious example is, let's say you're doing something with traffic and you want to detect every time a truck draw, drives by and you want to log that and you want to maybe see whether the way you made a street, a one-way street, changed uh, uh, the, the, the kind of traffic. And then it's very, instead of just running it real time where you just see it, it might be interesting to actually log all the different um, uh, vehicles, uh, what their class was, and also where they were at on the street. So that's maybe a more down-to-earth example, less weird than my exploding toilet. Uh, yeah, but but the reason I did it with Jason in this in this example is that I had like one thousand, and I kind of wanted to. Uh, yeah, okay, you get it. Let's move on. Um, okay. So I have a quick question. Yeah, go um, ahead. I'm I'm wondering what is the relationship between training the models and using them in runway? Um, like for example, the one that you use for your project, is it exactly Coco or did you train it with like more things? Um, 
Yeah, so um, so I actually I used an alternative which is called YOLO version three, but it does the same thing. I could might as well have used uh, Coco. YOLO is a bit more precise. Um, both of them, and also yeah, and everything we're doing more or less today is pre-trained and it's trained on large, large amounts of data. That means that with a model like this one, we cannot add more. Uh, categories which is we kind of have to live with the categories that the model gives us for instance these 90 categories um, that's a bit annoying on one hand on the other hand it's really cool to have access to these models because they're trained way better than we could we as individuals would be able to train it they're trained on like large large amounts of um, of images that are kind of nicely curated and somebody's done it for us and it would be very, very expensive and time consuming to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, however, you can train certain models on runway um, and we'll get to that towards the end of the workshop. If you're very interested in kind of like training your own things in terms of, of uh, classification and you want like a quick and easy start, then I would encourage people to check out ML5. Uh, which I mentioned a bit in the beginning before everybody was here. So ML5 is this very nice uh, machine learning library for JavaScript that makes it super easy to try to train your own um, classes or do uh, yeah, detection with, for instance, images. Another really, really nice tool is the new version of Teachable Machine from Google. Uh, that actually also lets you export uh, the models you train. And I've been following Teachable Machine quite a lot. I was part of making the first version of Teachable Machine. Me and another Danish guy um, helped out with that. We have not been part of, uh, of the second version, but the second version is really, really cool. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend you to try that out as well. Okay, now I think uh, unless there's uh, more questions, or feel free to ask. Uh, no. Then I think we will move on and try to run a model that's a bit more advanced uh, and that and a money that will actually uh, a model that will actually also eat away our credits. Uh, a money a model. Oh, sorry, it's been a long day. A model that is. Uh, that's not free to run because it runs on runway servers. And for that, we are going to go to the browse view. And we are going to search for, and let me just see, I think I also put it up here. We're going to search for fast style transfer. Fast and then dash style transfer. And for this one, I'm going to click add to workspace. And then it just gets directly added to my workspace. Then a weird thing is happening for me where I would normally just say start the model. Now it says start Docker and Docker is not available. So if you see this as well, I want you to click show advanced options and then click remote in run location. And then you can click hide advanced options once again. I'm just going to do that one more time. So if you're seeing something where it says start Docker, you don't want that. You want to click show advanced options. Then you want to make sure that the run location is remote. And you want to click hide advanced options again. And then what we want to do is click run remote. And now we are starting a model that's actually going to run on another computer somewhere. So I don't know. Uh, so runway is based in uh, Brooklyn. I don't know if they have data centers all over or how they do their cloud infrastructure, but we're running this model, not on our own computer, but somewhere else. 
Um, and that is why it can take a bit of time for it to start. Uh, and it's also a, a significantly more advanced model. So it takes longer to, uh, to kind of start it up. Once it's started, I want to click camera. And then hopefully I should be able to see myself in the input, but then in the output, see myself in the style of kind of like a cubist painting. And I see we have something in the chat. I am getting no results for the search, uh, Joanna. Okay, let's have a look. Um, so in the search, what you wanna search for is fast style transfer. And I'm just, if you can also copy it in. Um, so Joanna is getting no results for the search. Um, you can, you wanna search for specifically fast dash style dash, dash transfer. Um, so uh, Paki, Pagin, Paginam, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I, don't, I haven't heard anybody, everybody's name. No worries, so. it's, it's Paginam. So I, I have the same problem that I had with the last model, which is mm -hmm. when I, when it's the camera, when it's picking it up from the camera, like nothing happens, I could only use like the file. Yeah. So are you, the are you on, when I'm recording files. Are you on Windows or Mac? I'm on Windows. Okay, so on Windows, you cannot have the webcam turned on in multiple applications at the same time. Oh, uh, okay. Typically, you can't. So you, what you want to try out at least, and let me know if it works, try to close the camera here in Zoom and then uh, try to open it in Runway. And you might need to close the model and, and open it again or potentially uh, reopen Runway. Try that and, and let me know if it works. Sure, and just, so I stop the model and then, you know, stop the camera here and then try and see if it works. Run the model again yeah. and then try and see if it works. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Thank you. And Joanna, it works now, that's great. Um, so, can you remind how to set run remotely? Of course. And thanks so much for asking in the chat. It's really uh, nice that you ask these questions. Uh, oh, it solved it, perfect, oh, that was easy. So for, um, Uh, sorted. Okay, great. Uh, there was this question how to run it remotely. That's kind of like show advanced options. And then make sure you are set it to remote. And then you can run it. Okay, let's just uh, let me know how we're doing with this exercise. So some people had some issues, but they seem to be solved. Can are others able to run the, the model? Uh, yeah, a lot of you have your webcam turned off, but people say are saying yes in the chat. So that's great. Um, if you stop the model, uh, okay, so Samuel says, I think it's going but slowly. Yeah, so sometimes the models can run a bit slowly. You can see that mine runs at like, I don't know, sometimes two, like it takes it two uh, seconds to. Uh, to, to run a single frame, sometimes a bit less. So it can be a bit jumpy. We're, we're doing it somewhere else. And runway, it's like it's getting better and it's getting faster, but it is still a software that's in beta. So it's hard for me to kind of say how fast it will be. Um, of course, it's a, like, if you want to then save a single image, it doesn't really matter too much how fast it does it, I guess, unless you want to pro, um, process thousands of images, you can kind of just save one of them like this, so save, and then it'll save like that still image, and you get like a really nicely looking still image of yourself in that particular style. It, you can also input like a separate thing, so if you don't wanna input a webcam stream, you can input a movie, and then you can actually process the movie frame by frame, and then you get a very a nice, smooth looking uh, output in the end, so that can be like a, a nice thing to do, especially if, if the inference time is a bit jumpy. Um, yeah. Let's see, so for instance, yeah, I don't know what I got. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do that right now. But, I, but, the, but you can do that. Like you can select a, a movie file, actually. Um, okay, so people are asking me to, uh, Tony Lee, 
Can you repeat image still capture, please? Right. So I assume you mean how to run this on single images. Yes, how to uh, um, download the one image. Mm -hmm. So to, to download the one image, the image I just, mm -hmm. like at the image coming from the webcam feed being processed, or do you want to process a, a image you already have on your desktop? Uh, from the webcam feed, please. From the webcam feed, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna do this again. So if I'm running the webcam feed and my model is running, then it's kind of processing this all the time. Then if I want to save an image, I can kind of just click save and it will take, I guess the last frame that was processed and then you can click save and that will then be saved to your desktop for instance. Great. Thank you. My other window is covering up the bottom right hand corner. Ah, the right. Image yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the buttons are a bit small and there's so much like this UI is like, it's good, but it's also, it's cramped. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Okay, um, I think we are, we, we gotta move on because there's so much interesting stuff to show. So I hope it's okay that we're kind of gonna jump to another model. Is that okay? Or does anybody have more questions relating to this model? Maybe a thing uh, to talk about before we run and start off a new model is that you kind of want to stop the model running because it's actually kind of eating away your credit. So it's a good idea if you're not actively using a model to stop it, click stop. And then if you wanna see how much credit you have left, I think you get like $10 when you sign up or something like that. You can click your settings over here and that should tell you how much credit you have left. Um, so I'm, I have a lot of money here on Runway. Uh, do you get 10 credits still when you sign up or do you have more? Do you have like a deal with them? No, you can't, if you're do, doing more workshops, you can actually write them and they will give you uh, sometimes uh, free credits, especially if you're doing like a several day thing. They're very nice. They kind of just want people to use their tool. Um, okay. And a question in the chat. Is it uh, possible to change the style on this model? Yes, it is. So, um, it by default is set to the cubist style, but there are other styles. Uh, again, pre-trained styles you can select. Kandinsky Google Weather Map with uh, Google Maps, which is really weird. Hokusai, which is beautiful. Uh, all types of uh, different ones. But and I'm not. Yeah, I'm saying all types. There's actually only five. However, if you want to use your own complete, like unique style, then there's uh, several alternatives. And that's a cool thing about Runway. So Runway is just this nice, uh, style transfer and does it in one way. But if you are interested in style transfer with maybe a, a kind of different architecture, maybe the possibility of adding your own style, then we can have a look. If you go to browse models, so now I'm just kind of freestyling a bit. I can't really remember what it's called, but there's one called dynamic style transfer. There's uh, this one, this style transfer. There's this one, which is called style uh, ADA in style transfer, stylized images in the style of any image. So it seems like this one, you can actually upload your own style, which is not kind of neat. Um, or this one, arbitrary image stylization, stylized images in the style of any image. So if you're running a specific model and it's not really doing what you want, then try to search for similar models. And you can search by name. You can also kind of search by, sometimes they have tags, or you can search uh, up here in trending or by category. Um, yeah, so the category here would be style transfer, I guess. Okay, we got to move on uh, and we want to do uh, something called style gain. So I'm going to search for style and then gain. Let me just style gain. Maybe it's in two words. Style 
can, no, style can, and yeah, I'm interested in running style can two, I think. So I'm actually gonna search for style can two. Style can two. And the one I'm gonna run is this one. Um, so I'm interested in this one, this model here called style can two. Style can two. I'm gonna put it in the chat as well. Um, And you want to select the one that kind of, yeah, where it says style can two here, and it has the runway logo here. And the uh, caption is generate photorealistic images, improvements in image quality. This one, okay? I'm gonna click that one. This is a model uh, trained by NVIDIA, and it's GAN model. Uh, GAN is short for uh, Generative Adversarial Network, and it's a technique that allows people to feed a model a lot of images, and then it will uh, be able to produce new images that, that are very similar to the ones in the data set, however they are unique. Um, and we have some different uh, checkpoints we can try out. So we can try out faces, cars, cats, churches, or horses. Uh, the faces is the most impressive, uh, so we are going to stick with faces. And then you wanna click run remotely. And this might take a bit of time. It can take like a few minutes to get it running because it's relatively uh, heavy. So have patience. If I was a bit fast in actually selecting it, then let me just show you once again, which one it was I meant, style, GAN, two, and then this one with the faces, style game two. Okay, now it seems like it's working. Uh, so, so now it's actually running, and then what I wanna do is I wanna click vector. And this will then start to produce faces of people that don't exist, faces that this model has dreamt up. And sometimes you can kind of see, especially in the background, there are hints that this is weird, that th these are not real people. Like for instance, this person's cap, like something's obviously kind of wrong. Whereas this one, where the background is more neutral, this could trick me. I would think that this was a real human being. So typically like tells are what's happening in the background or yeah, sometimes it's more obvious than not other times. Um, but it's gotten pretty good at generating new faces. These are high resolution faces. These are 1024 by 1024. These are high quality. Um, you can navigate this space. This is kind of like what you call latent space. Um, because all of these non-existing human beings, they live in a, a high dimensional numeric space. So they all have a position uh, on, a, on what you call a vector. And that vector has, uh, I think, 512 dimensions. And now, because we're on a screen, we see it in two dimensions. But uh, generally, the idea is that the closer the images are to each other, like if they're next to each other, then the image, then they are, the faces have a lot of similarities. And if they're very far away, they don't have a lot of similarities. You can make that even more uh, obvious if you uh, put the sampling distance down. So let's try to put the sampling distance down to maybe 0 0.2. Then you can see all of these faces that are kind of similar and that changes ever so slightly. So what I did was the sampling distance. I lowered that and then you see like weird variations of kind of the same face. Uh, so here kind of like the hat changes a bit and the glasses, but it's kind of the same smile. Okay, so 
Let me know if this is if this is working for you. Are you able to run style gain two with the faces? Cool. Anybody having any issues or any um, questions? Yeah. Well, I clicked on vector, and then I'm just looking at a whole bunch of like empty thumbnails. It, it seems kind of stuck. Is it just a matter that it's loading a big data set, or is, is the model running? No, it's not running. It's uh, it's just not letting me switch back from vector to. Okay, if if the model is not running, so you can see that my model is running because I can click stop down here. If your first doesn't have a stop button, it's an indication that the model is not running. And if it's not running, it's not producing any images. So the model needs to be active and running before images will appear. Okay, so the vector isn't like in the input data set. It's already the output. Like what's showing up in this case in the upper window is already the output. Yes, the oh. vector is just like, this is just, and latent space, I have a hard time explaining it, uh, to be honest. Uh, but it's the way we navigate the images that it's able to generate. And we do that via a vector. And, and it's a bit misleading that they call it a vector and then you see it in this two dimensional space because actually it's in 512 dimensional space. You could also just feed it a long list of, of numbers and then it would generate a, an image in that particular position. Um, but, but they chose to do it in this 2D grid, which kind of makes sense. Um, but it's not, you can't like feed it your webcam as an input. That's not how this particular model works. Got it. Right. Uh, other questions? Uh, we have some in the chat. Um, can we choose gender, race, etc. in this model? Not in this model directly. Other models are able to do something along the lines of that. There was a model uh, a few years ago called Transparent Latent GAN, I think. Transparent Latent Again, and you could kind of like make, you could like start off at a certain point and you could make people younger or older or more happy or less happy or off with their glasses or on with their glasses. That's not something you can explicitly do with style again. However, people are kind of researching like what the different uh, directions in this latent space mean. So some have kind of figured out that if you move in this weird direction in 512 dimensional space, you, you kind of generally lose the glass or you gain hair or you become more like Caucasian or something like that. But it's not explicitly built into the model. Other models will have something like that. Um, and if you're really interested in that, maybe uh, send me a mail afterwards and I can send you some resources. Uh, but transparent latent GAN kind of at least a couple of years ago was able to do that. However, tra tra the transparent latent GAN doesn't look very nice uh, right now. Like these things age quite quickly. Uh, so yeah, 2017 faces look super weird compared to these. Um, okay. Did anybody try out some of the other ones? Did anybody try like the cats or the cars or the churches or the horses? So those are, I trained like the po more poorly trained. So it becomes more nightmarish, I would say, especially like the cats, they're like, sometimes it's like two cats in one, or it's like the eyes are totally weird. Um, whereas this faces one is so good, maybe also because it's like off faces kind of in a straight position and faces are very similar. Um, like all faces have eyes, noses, mouths, and so on. Whereas a cat could be in all kinds of weird positions or, or images of horses could have riders or it could be close to the horse or far away. So in general, like with these models that generate things, the more confined the, the data it has been trained on, the more realistic the output uh, becomes. Okay. We are going to move on to the next technique, which is uh, kind of thing, uh, maybe a bit similar to what you were asking before, uh, Nadav, about like 
can we maybe use the, the a webcam as an input to control like something face related? Let, let's try that. Let's see if there was a question in the chat. Cats are terrifying. Okay, so Joanna, try that out. Uh, I don't know, maybe you can share something in the chat. You can actually upload files. So if you if you made like a weird cat, then let's have a look at it. Share it in the, in the chat. That would be awesome. Um, okay. What we want to do now is we want to stop the uh, style guide model. We want to go back to browse. And we want to see what's trending. Um, and number three on trending is this first order motion model, which we're actually going to try out. So click that one and it's gonna be added to our workspace. Let's just see what happens in the chat. Okay, so Samuel also had a cat. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, okay, the cat and the bed are like one. That's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Um, cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, for for people it, kind of interesting in all this generative weirdness, then there's this mo there's this website called this X does not exist. So maybe some of you have heard of the website this person does not exist, but that's only one. So there's also this cat does not exist. This our Airbnb does not exist. This startup does not exist. This blah blah blah. So all types of of weird uh, generated things, both with images, but also with uh, texts. Okay. I added first order motion model to my workspace and we are going to try that out. For your input, you generally want to run your webcam. For, so that's the input on the on the left, the driving face image. The input on the right, you want a, another image of a face that you are going to kind of puppet, puppeteer. So uh, I'm going to select a file and I'll try to see if I can find an older version of myself. I think I have one like here. Here, and I want to see if I can control this version of myself with my own face in real time. And then I want to click Run Remote. And while I do that, let's see what's happening in the chat. So Joanna also uh, maybe posted like a scary cat. Let's have a look. Oh no! Oh, this is so weird. These are like hell. Hell kitties. Okay. <clears throat> okay, while this is uh, loading, let me just grab some water. I'll be right back. Okay, so first order motion model takes my face as an input, takes this face as a source image, and then, oh, oh, this looks really weird. Oh no, what's happening? Then I can like, I should be able to puppeteer my own face uh, with that face. Maybe it thinks that my light is a bit off. Let's just have a look. Oh, this is really, it's looking really weird for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening. Hmm. But either way, it should like, uh, it's actually what uh, this, uh, this woman, Jen, uh, Jennifer Sykes, used to control all of these dogs. And I've also used it in other cases. I don't know, for some reason, it just gives very, very weird uh, images back right now. Let, let me know how it's working for, for you. Are you able to control another face? 
Yes or no? It's it's loading. Okay, it's loading a bit. Yes, so Samuel is Tony is so, so if you have something fun then maybe you can share it um in the chat. I don't know why for some reason it just really, really freaks out. Okay, so it's, so yeah. So for Joanna it's slow. For for Andrea it's still loading. It is relatively slow uh to run. Um it doesn't run a lot of times per second typically. Um Hmm. I think for me, let, let me just try another image. Let's see if it if there's something wrong with this image. I can try another file here. Um, I think I'm gonna try this face instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not a lot better. I don't know. Maybe my webcam settings are a bit weird because I'm also using it in Runway um, or in Zoom. I don't know. Okay, but at least some people are are doing things. Let's see. Oh, interesting. And here. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Either way. Um. Okay, I'm gonna stop this model. Then I think I'm going to, uh, I'll maybe just, let's just do a quick recap. So, so far we have been able to open Runway. We have uh, run models locally. Uh, we have ha had a look at different ways of using uh, inputs. So you can use your webcam feed. You can use images or you can use movies. Um, other models that are maybe based on text, you can actually input text as a .txt file. Um, we have looked at exporting, so you can export to a JSON format, you can export still images, and you can also even export movies for certain models. And that was what we did with the local models that are free to use. Then we tried to use some models that you run remotely. So we had a look at fast style transfer. We had a look at style can, and now we had a somewhat uh, uh, not very successful look at the first order uh, motion model that just really looks freaky, at least on me. Um, and I wanna kinda know, are there any questions uh, so far? Anything that's kind of a bit puzzling to you or anything that doesn't, um, yeah, anything like, any questions? We have something here. Oh, now I can't see the chat. Oh, here is it. Is there a model uh, we can use for extracting visual sentiment? So I'm maybe that's my lack of English, but uh, what do you, what specifically do you mean by visual sentiment? It's probably just easier to say it out uh, so that everybody can hear rather than typing. If you don't mind, of course. So like the sentiment analysis for text, right? Uh, how positive or negative you're feeling after reading this text, or what the polarity is. So I was wondering whether there's something similar for images, where uh, you know make the images of greenery or of puppies or something, then it yields something like a positive sentiment, but if it's a war, it yields something like negative sentiment. Right. Um, that's not the, something I have struggled across in Runway, but there could be. So, so Runway has 100 and like 120 different models, and maybe one of them does something like that. The closest thing I've seen is I haven't seen anything with sentiment directly on images. Um, so, and I haven't seen that either on outside of runway. Um, but, but I guess you could make something like that. Uh, like somebody could make something like that, but it's not something I have seen. Thank um, you. No problem. Uh, 
Uh, then Tony asks, are there artists using these ML generated images as sources for 2D art such as paintings? Definitely. Um, so I think like one of my favorite kind of artificial intelligence artists is Mario Klingemann. Um, and he like has had stuff on, um, on Sotheby's uh, art galleries uh, and auctions, and he's a relatively well-known AI artist. Um, so we can have a look at him here. Um, yeah, and there would be others, like one of my favorites is actually Sofia Crespo. She is so cool. Uh, and she has a background in kind of like biology or bio, bio something, something. So she does like very organic looking AI art and, and typically like computer art is not that organic looking, but she does it in such a nice way. Um, especially her neural zoo project is just like, yeah, so cool. So like, and she's also a good, uh, she also teaches workshops and she's a good uh, public speaker and also, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I actually taught a workshop where she attended. So I was very kind of, wow, you attend by workshop. Uh, she's so cool. Um, yeah, so just show, check her out. Uh, and there would be lots of others. Um, yeah, those are just two that come to mind. Um, okay. Now I think we are going to, because of course, like when you're doing something like this, uh, you're running a bit out of time. So I want to skip this next part about chaining models. I'll quickly explain what it does. And then you, if you're interested, you can read the tutorial on how to do it. But the idea is that the output of one model can actually become the input of another model. So for instance, there's one model that looks at an image and tries to describe it in a sentence. So it could be something like this, where if it sees a person uh, uh, walking like this, oh, sorry, it, it, the description becomes a man carrying a surfboard. But then you can also do the opposite thing. You can try to uh, write a small sentence and then a model called attention GAN will generate an image based on that sentence. It becomes a bit weird and uncanny, uh, again, because the, the space is not really uh, confined or limited to something like faces. You can write whatever and it will attempt to do uh, whatever. Uh, but it means that, that it's a bit like nightmarish from time to time. But then I think you can have a look at and you can read the tutorial on it if you're interested, is that you can actually chain these together because one takes an image as an input, produces text as an output. The other takes text as an input, produces image as an output. And that, in that way you can make like weird, weird loops where they send information to each other. Uh, so that's an interesting thing, maybe a bit of an artistic thing to check out. Instead, what I want to do, and this will be again, yeah, relatively short, for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to give you some time to explore on your own. But I'll be here and I'll help you kind of debug if something's not working. The idea is that you, on your own, should try to get a feel for some different models in Runway by experimenting with them. You need to have a bit of patience when you're running them because it can take a bit of time to get them started. If your model just hangs for two minutes or more, then try to restart the model or potentially restart the uh, runway. And then I put up some recommended models for you to experiment with. GPT-2 is a model that will take your input text and try to continue it, uh, which is super, super interesting. Spade landscapes is something that lets you kind of draw with colors and then it will try to produce a, a landscape image based on whether, where you want the, the landscape to have grass, trees, skies, etc. Uh, Bassnet is a new model that's able to remove background from an image. So kind of like Photoshop, uh, magically just remove everything uh, but the foreground. Um, photo sketch is also really cool. YOL act, all types of uh, cool models. So try some of these out or explore your own. Um, and then what I would encourage you to do is to post maybe some of the most interesting findings in the chat so you can also inspire each other. 
And we're going to do that for 10 minutes. I hope that's okay. So for 10 minutes, try some of the models. I'm here to help if anybody gets stuck or if you don't understand how a model works. I, I've tried most of them. So are you, are people okay with that? Cool. And yeah, you can either like ask uh, if you're stuck verbally or do it in the chat. And in the chat, you can either like write me personally or write to everybody. And if you write me personally, I'll reply personally. Um, okay. Yeah. So do that for the next uh, 10 minutes and then we'll try to wrap up uh, a bit afterwards. Um, so Halse asked the question, uh, and it's about connecting uh, Runway to other software. So if you're interested, you can all listen along. Uh, it's a bit of a, I need to, to explain it kind of verbally and also show you something. So you can just ignore it if you're not interested, uh, but I'll kind of show you a bit. So you asked about uh, connecting Runway to something like Ableton. Um, there's not a specific Ableton bridge right now. Uh, but but um, um, are you also doing something with software like Max? Potentially? Yeah, I, I use Max for live a lot and and whatnot. So I I'm just not sure what the I saw the Ableton logo sort of at the end of one of the runway videos, and I was intrigued by that uh, the sort of yeah, audio yeah. the audio potential or the you know converting between visual and audio and all that kind of stuff, which sounds like it could be really interesting. Yeah. Um, so let me just, am I still, I'm still sharing my screen, right? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do is I will, so on this main website, which you can also access after the workshop, I have um, made like uh, a tutorial that we're not going to go through, but this con explains how to connect runway to uh, kind of like a, some software running localhost with P5.js. You're not necessarily interested in that. Um, maybe you can use, are you, you're not using processing either. You're only kind of using uh, Max for live. Uh, I mean, yeah, but I'm sure there are similarities. So I'm happy yeah. to, you know, okay. if you want to explain one of them, I just don't know really the mechanism for connecting these things and how, how they go about doing that. Right. So. Okay. So maybe I'll, first of all, I want to, I want to say that in, so Runway has a GitHub page and on that GitHub page, I think there is a specific sub directory for for max for live let's ah. just have a look at that uh, ba, 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 ba. so touch designer grasshopper there, uh, max, there's max maximus MSP. yeah there's max msp okay so it's not for, directly for max for live but it's for max msp um and and in this there would be a series of examples um and generally that there are different ways of connecting these things. You can do it with OSC messages, so you can do it with okay. socket uh, IO, or you can also do it with HTTP requests. I don't know which oh, of really? these are kind of uh, supported in uh, Max. I would think like OSC is definitely supported in Max, yep. so maybe that would be my, my go-to. Um, and then just like at a over, like at a, like a, um, like the quick explanation is kind of every time you have a model, let's say you have a model like Coco SSD and you're running it via the camera. Then 
uh, what you might be interested in is having a look at this network uh, tab. Because then you can see like what are different uh, options. You can do it with HTTP, Socket, OSC, uh -huh. or JavaScript. And then with OSC, for instance, you can kind of have a look at what is the input. So let's say you want to send an image to Runway from an external software. You want to do that over OSC, and, you, and it needs to be an image of this format, uh, and then you need to kind of like ha give it the name label. So I'm not that good with, uh, sorry, I'm give it the name image. I'm not that good with OSC protocols. Sure. You kind of need to follow that. And maybe you'll find an example in the, on the GitHub. And then for outputs, it gives you bo boxes and labels. And these are kind of arrays of numbers. And you can check them out if you have a look at what is kind of going on. Oh, I have so many things on my screen. Uh, down here in the in the show data, you can if you remember the Coco one. Yeah. It kind of shows you the data here. So this would be an array of labels and array of. So we could basically just parse uh, that in Max yeah. on the and run that within Ableton Live, and then do something with that data as you try. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you could uh, generate music from the objects around you. So the banana triggers the saxophone or whatever, right? Or the closer the banana, the like the bigger the bounding box, the more something like that. Um, That's right. So you basically you would have runway running, the local app running, and then it would be outputting in real time, and you would have Ableton running also, which would I mean inputting and outputting depending on what direction you want to go. But basically, you'd have both applications running simultaneously, and you could share the data real time like that. Yes. Okay. However, uh, uh, Runway is also, uh, they've added uh, last week a, a API kind of functionality, which is only in, in beta or, in, or like in closed uh, uh, testing. And I haven't tried it myself, but it actually allows you to run the, the Runway models without having the uh, software open on your computer. Gotcha, right. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, if you're not using a local model, the, the software is just sort of unnecessary in some ways. So, or, you know, yeah. the, the desktop software, cool. Okay, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean to, to take the whole 10 minutes to discuss this, but that was extremely no, useful. No, I, yeah, I really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, and then you said the, uh, whether that's a VST, uh, not that I know of, uh, but maybe. Okay. I, I'm not really using Ableton, but. Uh, sure, I can look around for that stuff. I can, yeah, yeah. I just, again, generally was curious as to the mechanism yeah. for connecting and you help. That. Yeah, so. yeah, but as long as it's kind of OSC, you can like make uh, make connections. Um, yeah. Okay. Any any other questions? Do you know a ML software called uh, Wikinator? Okay, so that was like a private question. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, but for for Pu Hao, uh, yes, I've taught a lot with Wikinator. I have actually have a lot of uh, examples for Wikinator, uh, definitely. And Wikinator can can also do healthy what what your thinking of. Uh, Maybe like if you're interested in that, you can we can have a chat about it after the workshop. I think we've done a lot of of uh, music stuff right now. Uh, but but Po, yeah, definitely. I know Wikinator, and I've lo made a lot of bridges between Wikinator and processing, and actually also Ableton back in the days. Uh, uh, but I don't use Wikinator a lot anymore because it's not been updated since I think Rebecca Fiebrink updated it in 2014 or something like that. I hadn't really seen an update since. Um, yep. Why, why did you ask? Cool. And, uh, I, I just wonder, um, like, um, if we need to open uh, the standalone app to, um, to connect to other software and, uh, uh, like, um, in my understanding, runway is more into visual analyzation, and uh, so if if I want to create like more like generative music system, and uh, I, I I tried Wikinator several times, and I I I also feel is uh, is simple, but runway seems much more powerful, but. Uh, yeah, so my, my question is also similar to the pre previous one, like how can I integrate uh, different software and um, yeah. 
So this is then again, the, the, the general answer to, to that question would be, I think over OSC, because Weekinator is a software that, that communicates with other softwares via OSC, and you could potentially make, like let's say you wanted Runway to, to do something with Weekinator, you could actually do it over OSC. Maybe you would need something in between to kind of translate uh, so the formats are right from one to the other. Um, but it's doable. And in a way, I also see Runway as, a, as like an, a next step Wikinator. Although Wikinator is a bit more focused on training, where Runway is quite focused on running existing models. But that is changing. And that's actually maybe something we'll get to just, uh, yeah, just in a second about how you can actually also train stuff with Runway. Thank you. Okay, so Samuel did like an interesting thing. Uh, so Samuel, before the workshop, uh, Samuel trained a model and, uh, oh, actually outputted this image. That looks beautiful. Nebula, cool. Um, okay. Okay, I think let's wrap up this small exercise. Uh, let me just know, like, how did it go? Were people able to try out models? Anything that was interesting to you or anything that where you got a bit stuck or let me know how it worked. Anybody want to share anything? You can also share like a bad experience. Oh, it never started even. Um, okay. I did uh, deep deep privacy, and the results were frightening. Um. <laughs> oh, explain what? So what? What did it do? Well, it seemed it seemed like it 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 was looking for a particular type of of you know where the where the head was facing. It was not good at side faces at all, or with any sort of um, if the, the hair went in front of the eyes a little bit, then the face would be completely. It just didn't know where to put the rest of the the rest of the features. So I had, you know, two, a photo where I had one, one person with bangs whose face was completely, you know, not replaced, but like very much distorted in many ways. And then a man in the background whose face was almost perfectly replaced by a generated image. So it was, oh, uh, okay. it was pretty, pretty interesting the way that you can see these different, these different results happening in the same image. Yeah. Nice. Any, any other uh, experiences people had with with models. I, uh, I just okay. enjoyed playing a lot with the landscape one, with that spade landscape one, uh, and and you know immediately kept wishing that it would have more elements because you know it's kind of like um, it's really interest it's a really interesting just kind of idea generator for creating these more abstracted kind of. Uh, Images, not really of a landscape even, right? But yeah, but you keep wanting to have more colors in your palette, right? It's kind of immediately, it's funny how it's so powerful, but it's also immediately uh, feels limiting, right? It's this dual kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think like there is also a model called Spade Coco, which has like hundreds of categories, but, but it doesn't really give you good results because it's less constrained. So, so landscape ones give you kind of neat results, but it's also very limited. And that's like in general, the more limited a model is, the more realistic you can train it. I just want to show you uh, a quick thing. Am I actually still, I'm getting a bit confused with Zoom. Am I, am I still sharing my screen? Yes, I am, right? Yes, okay. So on my website, I made uh, another kind of weird little uh, project, but based on, on that model you were just mentioning. Uh, where I try to generate pearl, uh, landscapes from images of pearl beads. And this also talks a bit into what uh, some of us were discussing in the, uh, just before, like how to connect this to external software. So let me just show you this small video. Um, and yeah, let's have a look at this. I made this landscape with pearl beads and I will now position it underneath a small camera like so Oops. 
here we go. Um, then over here I have a sketch written in processing that's able to find the closest color of all the pixels. Uh, Perla beads are really hard because they have holes and they shine, so I need to blur it out quite a bit. And then more or less the, um, the beads are now uh, associated with colors that have meaning for a model called spade landscapes, which I will send this image to. So this has semantic meaning of cloud, sky, river, grass and tree. And I can then send the image to the runway software. And then hopefully I get something back over here that uh, looks somewhat like this Perla bead landscape. Were you, were you able to see the video? And could you also hear the sound? Yeah, cool, okay. Uh, so that's kind of, yeah, one example of like connecting it to an external software because the, then you can like connect it to Unity, Open Frameworks, music, whatever. Um, okay. We are kind of running a bit out of time. Uh, is it okay if I go five minutes over time because we kind of started five minutes late? Is that fine? If people gotta go, they gotta go. I don't, that's totally okay. Um, because I wanna maybe talk about for the next five minutes, uh, how you can train your own model and also some future resources if you have gotten inspired by, uh, by Runway so far. So, I will go back to the uh, website and um, if you're interested in kind of like training a model, then there's a really, really good, quite long video tutorial here where uh, an American artist and programmer, Gene Kogan, explains how you train a model, uh, like from the very beginning uh, inside uh, Runway. Let's see what happens in the chat. Uh, the, uh, post the link to that one. Uh, uh, Paginam, do you mean uh, the, the, do you mean? The intro you mean to the model website? training. The, no, the intro to model training in Runway. Okay, Is so that on the website itself? Yes. Okay, so I can find it there. Yeah, you can. I can also, I can also share the link to it directly, I guess. Uh, once hey, Runway. Thank you. It's also here. Uh, direct link. Oops. Hey, Runway fans, this is Gene. Oops. Mm, there you go. But basically, this, this video kind of takes you through all the steps, but it's not that complicated, actually. And just like at a glance, what, it, what you do is you go to training, and then you can right now select two different models uh, that you can train. You can either train a generative image model or a generative text model. The text model is based on GPT-2. That's the model that's able to kind of get a prompt and then it will continue your text. And the generative models are based on either StyleGAN or StyleGAN2, which kind of, uh, they, they both do the same. You give them a lot of images and they will try to produce new images that are similar. So what you do is nicely explained in the video, but I can also kind of like take us through some of the first steps. You click train a new experiment, you give it a name. So I'm just gonna call mine delete because I wanna delete it afterwards. Then you upload a data set. And I've tried it with several different things. So I tried it with like uh, uh, stamps, Danish stamps. I've tried it with fashion stuff. I tried it with old photographs from the 18th century. Uh, I tried it with weird uh, images of plastic bags, etc. Or you can also uh, use an existing uh, one, uh, an existing data set. And it's recommended that you upload at least 500, but I would say the more the better. Then there are ways of pre-processing it, so you can like crop them, uh, and, and that's also, uh, it's a it's a bit of a technique in itself, but I have a, a link to uh, guidelines for pre-processing your data set. 
Um, and then you kind of run it uh, and let it uh, do its thing for, uh, yeah, like typically it takes like around half a day or something like that. Um, and the first model you train with Runway should be free when you uh, sign up as a new customer. Uh, after that, it costs, I don't know, I can't really remember, but it can easily run up to uh, like quite some dollars. So use your first uh, experiment wisely because it's free. Um, and then once you've trained a model, then that model should be available to you in models. So for instance, I can have a look at like new models and I can see that I actually trained this weird model on, um, on, um, on, it, on, on people from the 18th century. So I can run this model just as, as well as I can run any other model, but this is a model that's unique to me. I'm the owner of it. It's only me that can run it. And uh, it's trained on images that I decided. And uh, if you're kind of interested, you can have a look at a, yet another <laughs> weird artistic project I made uh, using that, uh, using Runner, which is this one. I'm gonna share that in the chat where I created kind of new people that don't exist. And I also generated uh, biographies of them. Um, so kind of like a weird fake news, but about people in the 18th century. Um, you can have a look at that. So let's see if, if it's running. And now you see that it's actually running and it's able to generate, like some of these people are kind of realistically looking, but some are also weird morphs between one person or two people person or like close up or not close up, but kind of interesting aesthetic, at least in my opinion. Um, yeah. Um, let's just see. Okay, so that's, that was kind of it. It was a very, I felt like I, I talked for days. I hope I didn't talk too much. I hope you enjoyed. And maybe if anybody has any questions now, or comments, or uh, thoughts, then let's let's share those. Um, thank you so much for hosting this workshop. It was incredibly helpful. Um, for the participants, I just want to uh, note that um, I'm sending out an, a follow-up email now that has an interview that we conducted with the, the founder of Runway, um, who, by the way, was really excited to hear that uh, you were um, instructing this workshop with us. And yeah, so just look out for that email. Um, I'm also sending out a link in the chat right now for a survey about you know what you learned, what sparked your curiosity? We just want to know more about um, your experience and things that um, you all are interested to learn more in the future. So um, I didn't mean to hijack the question section, but no, no, no that's fine. Right. <laughs> and, and, and cool that you had a talk with uh, Christopher. Uh, I yeah, I've only met him in person once, but I like a weird story. So Runway was his thesis project from when he studied at ITP in New York. And me and Gene Kogan, it's such a small world, this AI art world, but the guy who's explaining how to train a model uh, in one of the videos I referred to, me and him taught a workshop in Costa Rica where we used his uh, tool for the first time in a public workshop and slides like images from that workshop was part of his thesis presentation. So it's, yeah, it's just a small, small little world, even though I'm in Denmark and I, yeah. I never go no, to the that, US. That, that's the sense I got too, that the, the AI art community was quite tight knit. So it, it's been cool to see all these connections. And thank you so much for, for joining us here today. Great, well, I think we are over time. So uh, if anyone doesn't have any questions, I'm sure uh, uh, you can reach out. Um, but beyond that, thank you so much for attending this workshop. Um, and. Uh, yeah. Right. So, is there time for questions or not? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm I'm just hanging out, so you can, like I'm not going anywhere. You can ask me. Uh, yeah. And then I'll also say for people who might be uh, leaving now, I'll leave the website up, and in the website there's also 
my contacts. So if you have a, have a question kind of related to this stuff, I, yeah, feel free to reach out. Great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, this, was a, this was a great kind of a, a on, on ramp to, to using this tool. Because, um, you know, I've been looking at it for a while, but it's good to have more of a firm place to start. And we'll definitely refer back to that web page. Um, I had a specific question about, I saw that it's potentially possible to run, because I, I am curious about making some of these things run more in real time. Uh, and it seems like maybe if you have access to like a computer with a beefy GPU, you could maybe do that, but I'm not totally clear, like what would be the steps to do that? Yeah. yeah. So, and that's also like now that the, 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 uh, this is not being recorded. Is it? No, I don't see any small recording thing. So it's not being oh, recorded. I think it is actually. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. No. I can say it either way. I'm just joking. So, so runway kind of like it's a commercial startup, right? So they, they kind of want to encourage you to, to run the models on their, their website, uh, sorry, via their servers. And sometimes that yeah, can be a bit slow sending all of this back and forth and you don't have control over which uh, servers run it or which GPUs run it. However, and that's a really nice thing about runway is that they allow you to run models locally via this thing called Docker. And if you are on Linux, and right now it only works on Linux, you can actually run it on your beefy GPU. Mm. And on the website on Notion, I made a couple of links. If you go kind of all the way down, down to, uh, let me see, other runway links. Mm. And I have a link here calling this, called running models for free with Docker on CPU or GPU if you're on Linux. And it kind of takes you through all the steps of running it on CPU, which I like personally, I have it running, I can run models for free on my Mac, but only on CPU. And then if I run, I run them really, really fast. I do have a kind of like a gaming computer with Linux installed and, mm. and there I can run models on GPU. That's so, great. So it's possible. Uh, it's not, it's a bit, it was a bit tricky to set up, honestly, uh, but it's possible. Okay. Um, yeah, other, other questions or comments or thoughts? Well, I can keep throwing questions at you if nobody else. Go ahead, yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> Um, well, I'm curious also as somebody who teaches uh, in kind of new media art, um, if there are some good resources, kind of online resources for students just for kind of, uh, this stuff gets outdated so fast. So, you know, uh, the last time I, I saw a compilation of resources was I think Memo Acton made something a few years ago, but I don't know if there are some go-to resources for you for seeing what's the newest art that's being made or um, you know, mm. theory that's being written or yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, there is, uh, um, there is this website, uh, and you gotta give, if you give me like 40 seconds, I'll try to see if I can find it because I have it, but in another notion, so I need to log into that with another email, but I have at least something. Okay, so let's just see. Yeah. So, that one thing. <clears throat> There's this page called Deep Index. Mm. I'm not 100% sure how updated it is, but it's kind of a page that promises to keep track of what AI, in a very broad sense, can do and where it's being applied. And of course, some of it has to do with like healthcare or finance, but there's quite a lot of links in terms of creative uh, things. Mm. It's so, and if you're like more specific about uh, like the art scene and the overlaps between AI and art, then there is this UK um, curator, Lupa Elliot, I think. Uh, who specializes in kind of like being up to date with AI uh, art. 
and I, I'm mm. pretty sure she has a newsletter which you can subscribe mm. to. Oh, and cool. I, th I think that's like, that would be like, uh, like cutting edge, what's happening this week ish. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so those are my two thoughts right now. Cool. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. What, what are you, are you teaching the new media art and at MIT or? Uh, no, at uh, Connecticut College. That's not far from here. Okay, um, nice. Yeah, we have a center for arts and technology. So it's a lot of intersections of a lot of different fields, basically. Yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. Okay, then maybe we, we call it uh, a day, a night. <laughs> it's a bit late for me. I've also, I, I taught this morning as well, like Danish students, I was up at nine teaching Danish graphic design students. So yeah, now I think I'll sleep well. Uh, okay, all but right. uh, very Thank nice you so meeting much. you all. Yeah, see you. Bye-bye. Thank you.